Now, let's talk about some testing techniques that we can do to allow us to test paper more accurately. Because when we're dealing with paper, it's really all about the approach that you take when you're testing, whether that's how you prep it or how you set up the instrument or what have you. Well, dealing with coated paper, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to get a lot of potential movements through the edges. So paper is very unforgiving, so whatever is in the atmosphere, if we don't seal off the edges, it can come through the material. So we have some techniques that over the years we've picked up that are, have really helped us increase the repeatability of testing coated paper, or just any paper-based products for that matter, because all paper is porous. So now the first technique that I'm going to discuss in our lab is the most popular way to test paper-based films in structures because we're going to actually physically seal the edges with epoxy. So we're not going to allow any ingress to come in from the atmosphere. Or we're not going to allow anything that's going through our film to escape through the edges because it works both ways. You can have things come out or come in through the edges. So we call this the, the single foil mask with epoxy technique. So what I have in my hands here is one that's already done. And I'm just showing you a bit. We have this epoxy here in this very well-defined test area. So what's this going to allow us to do when we're measuring? It's going to allow our oxygen test gas come perpendicular through here and not have any disruption from the edges. And then if you look on the other side, we actually have a nice smooth surface. The mask allows us to create a nice good seal for our permeation testing while the other side that's actually exposed to whatever test gas, whether that's oxygen or water vapor, will have the edges sealed up. So then we know that the flux of the, the oxygen or water vapor will just come normal to the sample, which is what we want. And then we have the same defined test area on the other side there. Now I'm just going to go through a quick prep here so everyone can see how we actually do this. There is a series of steps. So I have a mask here. Uh, on the back it has adhesive, so I lay this mask down on my, my paper board here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to trace out this test area. So it's like that. So next, I'm going to cut this test area out, but I'm going to cut it slightly larger than the traced area. So then what that does is that allows me to have some area for my sample to adhere on the mask and still have my, the test area that I want. Okay, so I'll lay that down. Then I take the mask and I remove the adhesive liner on the back here. And then I'm gonna line up, just line the circles up from my trace circle to the actual orifice on the mask that defines the test area. So just lay it down and take your thumb or <clears throat> your finger and kind of create a, a good bond here on the adhesive. So then it'll look like that. So this side is the side that will seal to the instrument because it's nice and smooth. And then this is the side that will have the test gas challenge. Now whether that's oxygen or water vapor or CO2 or what have you. So then the next thing that I do, we want to save our um, adhesive liner and we, we line this up but on this adhesive side. So I'll just line up all the holes here. All right, so we basically just put, put it back on. We have our, our sample inside. And then I'm going to trace this area again on the back side. Now remember this back side is the side that's actually going to have the test gas challenge against it. So what we're going to do now after we trace it again is outside of this area around all the edges, we are going to apply epoxy and we're going to apply it in such a way that it comes up to this defined test area and so that it's actually covering the outer edges of this paper because that's where we're going to want to get that atmospheric ingress is in through these edges. So after we apply our epoxy, 
see we've sealed the edges and we have a nice smooth uh, interface for, for testing. So this technique here, this is what I would say is probably the standard because we know that there's no way we can get edge ingress because we actually physically applied epoxy to it. So it takes out any chance. Whereas if we just would have not done that, or if we double foil mask, which is the next technique that I'm gonna talk about, when you double foil mask, there's still a propensity for a thicker material to have edge leakage within the mask. Now, you may be sealed off from the atmosphere, but you could be exposing a larger surface area just for the nature of paper. So even if you have a sample that's inside of a mask that's sealed, you still can get lateral diffusion because the random molecules, they just wanna go everywhere. So this technique is the best for a thicker sample just because of the, a thicker sample is gonna have more of a propensity to have edge diffusion. Whereas a very thin sample, like very thin paper, there's not much edge there. So you may be able to get by with a double foiled mask for a thinner material.